Hi, my name is William Beam, and I've been using WP Engine as my WordPress host for about three years, and I thought I'd give you a behind-the-scenes look to see if it's a, something you'd like to use for yourself. We can start off on the home page here and just show you a couple of the rate plans that uh, they have over there. Get started if you've only got one site. There is a uh, personal plan that is $29 a month. I'm uh, currently using a professional plan for up to 10 installs at $99 a month. If you compare this to something like HostGator or Bluehost, that's going to seem like a lot of money. I'm wondering why, if you can get a web host at uh, Bluehost for about $3.50 a month, what's the difference going to be over at something like WP Engine? That's part of what we want to take a look at today. So let me get started over on uh, my user panel. And as you can see, we start off with the dashboard. I've got about uh, 10 different sites. You can start take a look at the number of visits. The one on the bottom here, William Beam, that's my photography site. And if you're a photographer, this is one of the main reasons that you probably want to consider this site, because I want you to take a look at the amount of uh, storage I'm using is a couple of gigs over here. And also my 10 day average, I'm putting out a couple of gigs, you know, within that period and hitting my visitors. So you're using a lot of bandwidth if you're running a photography site, because you're going to have a lot of images on there and pretty much every post. Every other blog should be having images, but I think photography sites, particularly with their portfolios and some of their galleries are just really going to run up more on the, the bandwidth side. As you can see, a lot of my other uh, blogs on here don't come anywhere near having the uh, same amount of uh, storage. And it's just, um, it's one of the things you want to consider if you're running a photography blog in particular, is that you're going to be putting photographs out there. You're going to be putting video out there. It's going to take up a lot of storage space and bandwidth, and you're going to need a host that can pump that data out there. So let's uh, take a quick look at that particular installation for uh, williambeam.com. And you can see that uh, we've got a very simple kind of control panel over here. If you're used to looking at other web hosts, you're probably used to seeing something like cPanel, where there's a number of uh, buttons and, and options to go into. And that's because they don't know what you're going to do. Those aren't necessarily dedicated WordPress hosts. The thing about WP Engine is they only do WordPress. If you're running WordPress and you need help and support with WordPress, they understand it. Whereas if I've previously used to run on uh, HostGator, I'd call up, maybe I'd get a guy who knew WordPress, maybe he didn't. They knew their hosting environment, but these guys know WordPress. They have their own optimized installation of WordPress. And if you need to do something a little bit, um, I don't want to say stranger, but if you need to do something a little bit more technical, a little different, they know how to help you get it done. And it's nice to have that kind of expertise to rely upon for the same price that you're having within your hosting plan. So on the quick overview, you can see, you know, my domain name. Uh, the C name is just basically what it is on their platform. And you can see the number of visitors going over uh, for the 30 day average. That's averaging about 727 visitors a day and almost 22,000 uh, visitors per month that are coming to my site. But you can also see the amount of bandwidth I'm putting out, you know, nearly three gigs a day and 81 gigs in a 30 day total. So and the storage, I'm running a couple of gigs just with all the photographs and all the video and, and other data that I've got on there. This little section up here where it says block traffic on production or staging. The reason that you may want to do that is let's say that you have a site that hasn't gone live yet. You don't necessarily want people going in there, seeing what's happening before you get there. That block traffic lets you put a password protection on your site. So nobody gets in unless they know the password and, and can get it there. Let's moving on down domains. It's pretty simple. You can have a number of domains going to the same site if you want to. One of the reasons you may want to do that is you've got your uh, primary domain. In this case, I've got williambeam.com. And you may also have some people that go always put a www in front so you can give them a quick little redirect to that. But another example is let's say that maybe you run a podcast and it has a different name than your domain and you want it to redirect to a specific page. You can associate that domain to a page on your site and just simply uh, add the domain here and then tell it which uh, page or which uh, directory that you want to go to. The next one, CDN, stands for Content Delivery Network. As part of your a hosting package, there is a content delivery network. And that basically means that throughout uh, the world, they have different servers that will handle the static parts of your site. So for example, your photographs, your JavaScript, and things that don't change on your site are put out there. So they're closer to the people who are visiting. 
So they don't all have to come back to the same server at one particular geographic location. They can visit something that's closer. It gives a better performance for the user and the faster the page loads for them, the happier they're going to be. And all you have to do is check this one box to make it happen. Coming down, redirect rules are if you want to redirect uh, parts of your domain to something else. In this case, I've got it set up so that if someone goes to williambeam.com slash adobe, it actually goes to an affiliate link that I have. And that way it's, it's very easy for me to go ahead and uh, work with uh, some of the affiliate links that I have and just redirect them to, if you want to buy a purchase uh, from Adobe, I can just say, go to williambeam.com slash Adobe. They get my affiliate link. They go over to Adobe's page. And if they purchase something at no extra cost to them, I end up with uh, a, a small commission for giving them the referral. The backup points are one of the greatest little services over here. If you've looked into doing backups with WordPress on other hosts, usually you have to pay for an external service, uh, something like Vault Press, and that kind of stuff can add up. This, again, is provided to you at no extra cost. And you can see a number of things over here says daily checkpoints. So basically every day they're doing a backup for you, but you can also do a backup at any time that you want to. And if you need to restore, you can select one and click restore and put your site back to the way it was. And this site also includes your media and, and files and so forth. So when you do your backup, you're backing up not just the WordPress database, but also your media that goes along with it. And that includes your photographs. Your error logs, in case something's going a little wonky with your site and you want to take a look. If I had any errors, they'd be showing up right in here. Every once in a while, I'll get something and take a look in here. But usually, I've been fortunate that it's, it's been nothing. You know, maybe somebody else is trying to uh, give a ping back to me. But if you are any problems, check your error logs and see what's going on. You can you can quickly get them here and then uh, download them if need be. This item called Git Push. Git is for developers, and basically it is a code management repository. It's not something that I've had a need to go to, but if you are a developer and you're used to using Git, it would be nice to find some integration right inside of here. So as you go through uh, different revisions of your software code for web development, you can access it and push and pull it right here. Mostly that would uh, be something you'd wanna do with Teams, but it's here in case you need it. Next on the list is a security certificate. So if you want to do SSL, you've got an option. You can buy one from uh, WP Engine, and they do a nice job of giving you a quick walkthrough and installing it automatically for you. Or you can also come over and add a third-party certificate. So perhaps maybe you bought one from GoDaddy or another provider and uh, go ahead and install it. The utilities are really simple. If Again, if you want to uh, password protect your site, either for your production, which is your live site, or staging, which is uh, basically a background copy of your site, the staging... Uh, site lets you take what you've got on your live site, copy it over staging, make changes there until uh, you're satisfied with it, and then push those changes back over to your live site. It's really kind of a nice feature that you don't find on many web hosts. And we'll take a look at that uh, in a moment. Coming on down, you can reset your file permissions. WP Engine also supports, supports multi-site if you need to use that. And it has its built-in caching technique or excuse me, technology. You don't need to go off and install your own cache. You don't need to work, worry about uh, adding other services. It is built in. And if you ever need to clear the cache out, all you've got to do is just hit that button. It's a lot of technology involved. And really, the, it boils it down to, as a user, all you have to do is turn it on or turn it off. And then if you need to clear it, push a button. It, it's really that simple. You don't have to worry about all the settings that you go through with, um, I think the popular plugin is like W3 Total Cache. That has a myriad of settings that uh, people try and work out and go through. You don't have to worry about any of that. It's all done for you. Site migration is how they make it easy for you if you're moving over from another site. And essentially what happens is WP Engine has a plugin. You take that plugin to your website that's hosted on another provider, and it will automatically talk to the WP Engine host and pull all of your settings and your information from the old host and install it here on the new host. All you have to do is provide the information for your new um, setup here and tell it a couple of details about how to log in over there and everything just goes. It's a very simple and smooth and easy way to migrate a site from one host to the next. I've done a number of uh, site migrations. None of them have been fun. I wish I had this uh, much earlier in my life. <laughs> it would have saved me a lot of trouble. 
Finally, you have links to PHP My Admin, which is your uh, database manager. And of course, this is a link to WordPress Admin, which will launch the uh, admin page of this particular installation for uh, WP Engine. And that's it. And if you're looking at it thinking, well, that's not much, that's kind of the point. Uh, WP Engine does a lot of the work for you. You don't have to concentrate on supporting or maintaining it for you. WP Engine will give you, um, it, it's, it'll handle like your WordPress updates for you on a regular basis. And if for some reason that you need to delay that, you can do that if, back over here. If we go to the overview, you can see this uh, checkbox that says defer to the next update. Basically that gives you time to make sure that all of your plugins and, and other um, settings are ready for the next version of WordPress whenever it comes out. And I believe they give you about 60 days to, to make sure before you go on. But that is the other part of uh, managed hosting is they don't want you to be affected by problems on one of your neighbor's sites. So everybody does get upgraded within typically about two weeks after a new version of WordPress is launched. You can either upgrade it yourself or they will go ahead and upgrade it for you automatically. Same thing with plugins. They also have a list of, of uh, disallowed plugins. And some people are we're a little taken aback by that because of a couple of popular plugins, such as yet another related post are not allowed, but there's good reason for that. They sucked out the life of the server They're uh, And if they're doing that, they're not only affecting the web page where it's loaded, but also the other sites that may be sharing that server. So they've disallowed plugins that based upon their experience and research have shown that uh, can cause problems. And that's kind of a good thing. At any rate, this was uh, just to us to give you a little bit of an insight to what's going on. The dashboard we've taken a look at, and that'll show you the number of hosts that you have, you know, what they're a quick look at them. Users just basically show you the user the accounts that you have set up. Settings I'm not going to go into because that gets into my billing information. And I decided that's probably not the best thing to share, but it's basically your profile, your billing information, and uh, your receipts that you need for things. So I hope that uh, helped you out. Actually, you know what? Let's take a quick look at one more thing. I wanted to show you uh, support. They have what they call a support garage. And you can see there's a number of topics over here. And some of them have interactive walkthroughs. So, for example, let's go take a look at uh, Git. If you're not sure what that is, you can come over here. We'll click on what is Git. Git is a version control system that's widely used by software developers to track and manage changes to a project's code. And as you can see down here at the bottom, there's a little player, and I just stopped that. So this little help me thing will come up. It's always available for you. You can see uh, a number of articles that have um, little audio and walkthroughs like that. They'll also walk you through the site. So if you want to know more about how to use a particular service or some of this information, some of these audio walkthroughs will do a great job of just showing you where on the site you're going to look. And uh, by the time you get through, have things configured for you. Let's take a quick look at backups. And just uh, an example of one of their articles. So you click on that and it's very clear. It's very clean. You can uh, go through and read what backs up are done, how you can do manual backups and how you can roll back in case you're dissatisfied with some of the changes that you made. You can also download your backups to have them offline. So let me go ahead and close that out. But let's go ahead and take a look at, let me go back to my installs and let's go ahead and log in to my WordPress admin account. All right, here we are inside of WordPress. And one of the things you're gonna notice is there is a WP Engine tab over here, right at the top. You'll see general settings, but you'll also see staging. So very simple. You've got the option to copy site from live to staging. So that what you're telling it there is take everything I've got on my live site, copy it over to the staging site, which you can access at uh, the URL like your name. So it'll be, in this case, williambeam.staging.wpengine.com. And there you can go ahead and make the changes. You can test out ideas. You can change your theme, whatever it is that you want to do to change your site. When you're done and you're satisfied with that, you come over and hit the black button, copy site from staging to live. All the changes that you've made over there get pushed back, but yet the content that you've uh, implemented is still there. It just simply works in the new format or the new theme or whatever changes you've made from the staging site. It's a very handy thing. So it's an easy way to upgrade and change your site when you need to without having to buy yet another um, 
hosting account or pay for an additional uh, site with it and then make changes there and then manually migrate them over. This uh, does it very automatically and very easily for you. So it's, it's one of the handier tools that they've got. And with that, I hope this has been useful for you. If you're interested in uh, checking out WP Engine, I'd appreciate your support on my affiliate link. It is williambeam.com slash WP Engine. There's no additional cost to you. I'll get a little bit of a commission in case you do decide to go ahead and make a purchase. The reason I'm bringing this up is I've been using this for three years. But prior to that, I've, I've had other hosting accounts. This one is so much better for a professional environment. And I, I, I truly can recommend it. I've been with them, I said, for three years. It's much better. The performance is outstanding. The support has been great. And I highly recommend it. So again, uh, please go to williambeam.com slash WP Engine. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in YouTube. And I'll be more than happy to help you out as best I can. Thank you.